Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, a probe looks at the sun, Megalodon is big, and dinosaurs. Starting off the news this week, Tasmanian devils have returned to the wild on the Australian mainland for the first time in three millennia. Tasmanian devils were hit hard in the 90s by a contagious mouth cancer, leaving it in serious trouble on the island of Tasmania, where it lived in the wild. They have had a recovery since then, but there's still a lot of hope for Tasmanian devils to thrive, and reintroducing them into Australia is part of that plan. They haven't just been brought back for their own benefit, however, as it's believed that they can help balance the ecosystem that they are introduced to. As scavengers, they are perfect for this role. The first of this batch of 26 were released as 15 in March earlier on this year, and after the team behind this were confident that the devils had thrived in their new environment, 11 more were introduced in the first half of September. In other news, ESA has released the first data on the Solar Orbiter probe that was launched in February earlier this year. This data comes from three of the ten instruments it carries on board, and has shed more light onto the state of the Sun during a quiet phase. Our Sun is expected to release massive amounts of material into the wider solar system, and become very active generally in the next few years, but at the moment, the activity on the Sun is minimal, and there are almost no sunspots on its surface. While the Solar Orbiter, a joint project between ESA and NASA, has started transmitting data, it's not as close to the Sun as it's eventually going to get, but this will happen over the course of a few years. One of the reasons that the data has been released so early is that the team behind it wants to get out all the material they can as early as possible, to be accessed by as many people as possible sooner rather than later. Also in the news this week is a study that has used measurements from specimens of all the 13 species of living mackerel sharks that feed on large prey to work out estimates of the body, jaw and dentition lengths of extinct mackerel sharks. Looking at the distribution of body size of all known prehistoric mackerel sharks, it was then found that small body size was actually the basal condition for all of them, with larger body sizes evolving independently. Megalodon therefore seems to be an outlier among its relatives, since the others have a general limit of 7 meters long, while Megalodon reached at least 14 meters. The paper also explores some ideas as to why the mackerel sharks were capable of growing to such large sizes. And now over to Ben, to put a Tyrannosaur in our reasonably priced Titanosaur. Thanks Doug. Up next is the description of a new genus and species of dinosaur, which is always nice to see, Oxoco avarsen. This dinosaur is a kind of oviraptorid, and is based on a few relatively very well preserved fossils from the late Cretaceous of Mongolia. Remarkably though, this oviraptorosaur actually had reduced forelimbs that only had two functional digits on them, something that's never been seen in this group of dinosaurs before. It's suggested that this reduction occurred when the animals expanded into a new niche in the Gobi region, which didn't require the elongated forelimbs of other oviraptorosaurs, potentially hinting at some niche partitioning in these organisms. And finally is a very interesting paper that has described crocodile-like sensory scales in the non-avian dinosaur Juravenator from the late Jurassic of Germany. Epidermal scales had been identified on the preserved tail of the incredible fossil of this dinosaur before, but now this new research has found a unique type of scale with circular nodes that are identified as integumentary sense organs, similar to those seen in modern crocodilians. This seems to indicate that the tail of Juravenator, therefore, had some kind of sensory function, a very intriguing find. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. That's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.